Welcome back to a brand new video from 55 degrees north. On the banks of the River Tyne stands a bridge unlike any other. It doesn't soar high or stretch far. Instead, it moves. This is the Swin Bridge of Newcastle upon Tyne, a Victorian masterpiece that once turned to let mighty warships pass and today remains a living monument to British industrial age. Long before the Swin Bridge turned its first gear, this spot in the River Tyne was already a vital crossing for nearly 2,000 years. The story begins with the Romans. In the 2nd century AD, they built a fort called Ponzelius here, named after Emperor Hadrian's family. Its bridge was one of the first permanent crossings of the Tyne, linking the Roman military road south of the river to Hadrian's Wall to the north. Merchants, soldiers and supplies all flowed across this frontier outpost. As Roman Britain faded, the original bridge disappeared, but the crossing endured. By the 1200s, a grand medieval stone bridge stood here. It was lined with houses, shops and even a chapel halfway across, a bustling street suspended above the river. In 1771, a devastating flood rolled down the Tyne. The medieval bridge, after standing for 500 years, was smashed to pieces in a single night. Whole arches collapsed and its wreckage choked the river for weeks. A replacement opened in 1781, a neat nine-arch stone bridge in Georgian style. For nearly a century, it served as Newcastle's main crossing. But this new bridge had one fatal flaw. It was too low for ships of the industrial age. By the mid-1800s, Newcastle shipyards were booming. Coal colliers, steam tugs and even warships were crowding the river and all of them were too tall to pass under the 1781 arches. The Tyne is grown but the bridge was blocking its future. This grown problem set the stage for a revolution in design and birth of a bridge that could move. By the 1850s, Newcastle was transforming. Coal exports poured from the Tyne, ironworks rode on its banks, and upriver, a young inventor named William George Armstrong was about to change everything. Armstrong was no ordinary industrialist. He had started as a lawyer, but his fascination with machinery led him to build hydraulic cranes, water-powered engines and powerful naval guns. By the 1860s, his Elswick works sprawled the west bank of the Tyne. There, his team built massive cannons for the Royal Navy and soon he dreamed of building entire warships too. The old 1781 bridge blocked the river. Nothing large could sail past it to reach Armstrong's works. He realised that if he wanted to stay at the cutting edge of industry, the river had to be opened up. And so Armstrong joined forces with the River Tyne Improvement Commission, the authority charged with modernising the river. In 1861, Parliament granted the Commission permission to demolish the Agent Stone Bridge and build something entirely new on one condition. It could not obstruct shipping. Armstrong's solution was daring. Build a bridge that could rotate. Instead of fixed arches, its central span would pivot horizontally, opening two clear channels on either side for ships to pass. It would use the very technology Armstrong had pioneered for rotating heavy naval gun turrets, but on a colossal scale. The new Swin Bridge would be the largest of its kind in the world. At its heart would be a hydraulic system. Steam-powered pumps forcing water into a deep accumulator, ready to release massive pressure to drive pistons, gears and rollers that could move an entire bridge weighing 1,400 tonnes. It was cutting-edge Victorian engineering, a bold gamble because if it failed, the river would be blocked 
completely. But if it worked, it would give Newcastle's industries a gateway to the sea. Armstrong believed it could be done, and soon as his company would begin turning blueprints in iron and steel, building a bridge the world had never seen before. With the design approved, the real challenge began, building it. The first task was clearing the old 1781 bridge. In 1868, its nine stone arches were painstakingly dismantled, carted away block by block, until for the first time in centuries, the Tyne ran open at this spot. Engineers from the River Tyne Improvement Commission began sinking enormous cast iron cylinders into the riverbed to form the new bridge's foundations. These hollow cylinders were lowered into place, workers toiled inside them in compressed air, and the riverbed silt was excavated out by hand and dangerous, gruelling task. Once they hit solid ground, the cylinders were filled with concrete and topped with granite masonry piers to carry the bridge's weight. At the same time, Robert Armstrong's Elzik Works, the giant iron components of the swin span were being forged and riveted together. The two huge bowstring girders, each over 280 foot long, were floated into position on barges and lifted onto the central pier using hydraulic jacks, itself a groundbreaking operation for the 1870s. Inside the pier, Armstrong's engineers installed the bridge's beaten heart, three hydraulic engines, a giant accumulator and a massive pivot bearing. Steam-powered pumps would charge the accumulator. A 60-foot vertical cylinder sunk deep below, storing energy to turn the whole bridge like a colossal turret. By early 1876, the bridge stood complete. Before the public could cross, it had to prove its strength in dramatic load tests. Rail wagons weighing over 60 tonnes were parked in the centre and the bridge held firm without a tremor. On June the 15th, 1876, the Swin Bridge opened quietly to carts and pedestrians and one month later, on the 17th of July, 1876, crowds laid the quayside to watch as the Great Iron Span turned for the very first time, opening the upper Tyne to the world's ships. At 281 feet long and 1,400 tonnes, it was the largest swing bridge on earth, a triumph of Victorian engineering. Newcastle now had a bridge that just didn't cross the river, it moved for it. The bridge transformed Newcastle's river. Now vast steamers and even Royal Navy battleships could sail up river to Armstrong shipyards. In 1924, the bridge swung over 6,000 times, an average of 16 times every single day. Each swing halted road traffic, but the industrial payoff was enormous. The bridge helped power the region's shipbuilding and armaments boom. It placed Newcastle at the heart of Britain's industrial empire. By the 1920s, constant openings caused traffic chaos. A new high-level crossing, the Tyne Bridge, opened in 1928 and took most road traffic away. By the mid-century, shipping on the Tyne declined. In 1959, the Swin Bridge's steam pumps were replaced by electric motors, but the original Victorian machinery stayed in place. As the shipyards faded, the bridge swung less and less, yet it endured well in wars, fires and the march of time. Today, the Swin Bridge still carries vehicles and pedestrians across the Tyne, but its most famous feature, the ability to rotate open for ships, has fallen silent. The bridge last swung successfully in 2019. Since then, its hydraulic mechanism has failed, leaving the great span locked in place. Because this is no ordinary structure, it's a complex piece of Victorian engineering, a one-of-a-kind system of pistons, gears and hydraulics that have survived nearly a century and a half. Repairing it is not routine maintenance. 
it's a major engineering challenge. Specialist parts must be crafted and the costs are significant. In 2023, a new campaign began to restore the bridge to full work in order, with the goal of seeing it swing again in time for its 150th anniversary in 2026. For now, the Swin Bridge stands frozen, a reminder of Newcastle's engineering genius awaiting the moment when it will turn once more. 2026, this Victoria Marvel will mark 150 years. Will it swing again by then? Only time and engineering will tell. Please leave a comment below with your thoughts on the Swin Bridge. And if you've liked the video, please give it a massive thumbs up as it really helps the channel grow. And if you've not already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that bell notification when I release more videos. A massive thank you for watching. See you next time, right here on 55 Degrees North.